during the roaring 20s and 30s right here in Houston? Well, photographer, author, and gallery owner Story Sloan III can answer that question and more through photographs. Story is here with a glimpse of the past and how it shaped our future. Thank okay, you so you've got to give me a little backstory. Tell me, how did you get involved into collecting all of these historical pictures? Well, I was degreed as a commercial photographer, and then my family had a business that was an art gallery. And my father ran across an archive of vintage photographs of Houston that was being burned for the silver contract. They were destroying them all. There's about 30,000 images. Wow. So essentially the negatives then for the photograph have trace amounts of silver. Trace amounts of silver. Silver, silver halide crystals. And they were and all then, being burned. They were all being burned for just pennies on the dollar worth of silver for it. So my father just couldn't have that. So he set out to buy all 30,000, but they wouldn't sell him all 30,000. They let him cherry pick the collection and he ended up with about 10%. And that's what is represented here. Wow. So here at your gallery then, Story, you have all kinds, not just photographs though, but you also have several really unusual pieces from Houston's past. Pieces that would have otherwise been lost had your father not saved them. Oh, absolutely. From cameras to bottles to bricks. Uh, primarily the photographs though. I mean, that was the big, that was the big focus for my father and ended up being the big focus for our family to preserve these. So let's start talking through some some of the okay. photographs as we're kind of focusing in on the 20s and 30s. Let's start first with the one that's the gateway to the world sign. Oh, that's, that's one of my favorites. And that actual image was sitting on the corner of uh, Main Street and Bel Air, right in the really? middle of Main Street. So we're looking due east. Today's standard, you would see MD Anderson Hospital behind it. And this was 1928. Houston Lighting and Power actually put the sign up. And if you were driving into Houston at night in 1928, it's the first thing you would see lit up. And how progressive is that gateway to the world in 1928? Wow, and my, my, how That's things cool. have changed. So on this end, it was like the, the actual word Houston is what was lighting was up, right? It was lit up, it was electrified. Oh. Where is that sign today? Do you know? Is I that have no idea. A lot of these signs, just like our buildings in Houston, are not preserved. They just are disappear. torn down, right? They disappear. Oh. So tragic. Okay, so let's go on to kind of focusing in now in the realm of home, work, and play. First picture is oil field. Look at all oh. those oil derricks. <laughs> there we go. Wow. Look, I mean, look at those kids. What toys do you have in Houston, Texas for a bunch of young kids, young boys, would be an oil derrick uh, uh, that was actually operating. So it's a good example of what kids would play with uh, when they were young. And do you know about what part of Houston this was? This was actually a comprised photograph that was shot in the uh, in the studio. Yeah, and, and actually, that, with that little dog, it reminds me of Little Rascals. Well, you, uh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, Spanky and our gang yeah. and Little Rascals. And we're seeing, uh, we just saw a brief uh, image of an Iceman back in the day. This happens to be one of my favorite photographs. Uh, and it's so cool. I can't wait to frame this and put it on the wall of my home. Well, you know, the Iceman back then, you had, uh, before you had electronic refrigeration, to stay cool, you had to have ice. There it is. And, you know, we found out during Hurricane Ike how important ice was. Yeah. Well, that's how important it was back then. He was holding a 25 pound block of ice, which would last about a week. And I love that he had a pipe in his mouth and the extra matches up there in his he hat. He kind of looked a little bit like the Marlboro Man. Oh, he had a little bit of swank and attitude yeah. towards him. So he's one of our most popular images in the collection. Well, and you do some poster prints, right? Abs absolutely, we do some poster prints of these images. Uh, one that will be given away uh, later that's free for anybody that stops by. So. Oh yeah, so oh. if people are out in the mall and they're interested in some these images. Okay, so let's look at some of the images of them. appliances. <laughs> oh, the, is this? That looks like the Metropolitan That's a theater. theater. Yeah, we jumped ahead of the Metropolitan Theater. Well, that Metropolitan Movie Theater is a good example of business working with business. Uh, there was a shoe store, Crop and Tuffley, and uh, they gave a coupon away. You buy a pair of shoes and you get a ticket to a matinee. Check that out. That's Gary, a lot of people that took advantage there. of that. And look at the movie that's on the marquee, Gary Cooper in the yeah. Texan. And one of my favorite images of this is the Argyle socks that all the boys are wearing. And if you notice, they're wearing coats. Some of them are wearing ties. Some of even the boys are wearing hats. And the girls are wearing the little Mary Jane shoes with the little ruffled socks. And the little page boy haircut. Yeah. So uh, oh, that's a wonderful, wonderful example of, you know, what, what people did for playing. So let's go on to the doll show. Okay. You've got an image of, before we see it, we can start chatting about it. So you have all these little girls and they'll, their dolls sort of lined up in front of them. It was over in, in, in this it, photo. It was over in Milroy Park in the Heights. And uh, Milroy Park is still in existence off of Yale Street. 
And all these little girls had gathered up their dolls and decided they were going to have a doll show. Uh, my favorite part of this photograph is a little boy off to the right that the sister has a death grip on his hand. I'm sure <laughs> I see he, that. I'm sure he didn't want to come to this event. No, but, probably not. But it was there nonetheless. <laughs> And I want to mention that uh, you're giving away free posters to folks who come by, uh, uh, stop by the gallery, yeah, and mention that they saw it right here on Houston Life. So cool. Okay, what about Babe Ruth? What? Oh, Babe Ruth and the Yankees would come to Houston uh, quite often. And Houston had a baseball team long before the Astros was the Houston Buffaloes. So Babe Ruth would come with the Yankees and they would play exhibition games. So Babe Ruth came to Houston and he's giving a talk here at the old Houston City Auditorium, which now is the, the site of where Jones Hall is. But this was in front of the Knot Hole Gang. And the Knot Hole Gang was a group of uh, boy, young boys who could not afford to go to the baseball games. Uh -huh. So they would knock a knot hole out in the fence and they would watch the game through the knot hole. So the Lions Club got together and with Babe Ruth and then with the Houston Fire Department and sponsored this event uh, for Babe to come and talk to these kids. And maybe maybe while we roll through some of these last photos, because I know we're running out of time, why don't you talk to us a little bit, Story, about just the importance of preserving these images? Because for a city, a world-class city like Houston, it does seem like sort of a tragedy that so many of the images were lost. Well, you know, a lot of other communities, we, we really relish their, their history. And Houston, unfortunately, has a tendency of wanting to tear it down. It has always felt my belief that the soul of every community rests within the history of that community. And these photographs are a great gateway to that history. Look at that car in just downtown. That's I mean, downtown 1928 Main Street. Also, negatives have a very uh, specific short life, right? So if people are out there who maybe have some family heirlooms in the form of negatives, they've got to move quickly to preserve Oh, you need them, to get right? them out of that shoe box. It sits in the closet. If you smell uh, an odor of vinegar, you know that the negatives are de decomposing. You need to scan them digitally. Uh, a negative will last about 80 to 90 years, and then it'll start to dissolve. So in effect, it's history going blind. And you have some old negatives with These you These are some today. of the old negatives that basically are the 8 by 10 large format that these photographs are made from. And those As you can really? see, it's starting to deteriorate. And in another oh, year, it will be totally dissolved and gone. So it'll just crumble. Then. And, and, and that history for the future will be lost. And this was the and type of tragic. negative that was being burned for the silver This content? is the exact type of negative that was being burned. There was even some that were on glass. Story, can we go through some of the pictures that you have oh, absolutely. around here? Let's start over here. This is, this is going to be a favorite for a certain generation of Houstonians because the Astrodome was brand new yeah. in 1968. But you eighth can, wonder of the world. Eighth wonder of the world, and hopefully it'll stay around for generations to come. But you can see the construction of Astro World, which was many a playground for many uh, a Houstonian as they were growing up. The road in front of it is Interstate or a 610 loop and the bridge is yet to be constructed over it. And behind the Astrodome, you can see the old Colt 45 Stadium. Oh, wow. It's amazing to see all the empty land around it. What yeah. about this larger Big photograph? This larger middle? photograph is one of my favorites because it shows West Houston. The circus that's dead center is where City Hall sits today. So that's going to give you a point of orientation. Wow. So cool. And it's very ironic that the circus has moved indoors after 80 years with City Hall sitting there. The building off to the uh, uh, extreme right, the striped building, is the Democratic National Convention Hall, Sam Houston Hall. And in 1928, uh, Jesse Jones brought the Democratic Convention to Houston to showcase Houston as a major metropolis. It goes hand in hand with that sign, Gateway to the World. And Story, I love that in all these so photographs, awesome. of course, you also have a photo of your dad, his back to us, and your great-grandfather. So this was really, really cool. Thank you so much for stopping. Oh, I appreciate you all having me Thanks on. Thanks for stopping in. Now, if you would like to see more of Houston's history through pictures, you can visit the Sloan Gallery off of Derry, Ashford, Tuesday through Saturday. Now, you can also visit the website Sloan, that's Sloan with an E, gallery.com. Thank you And as you again. a reminder, if you tell him you saw him on Houston Life, he just might poster. give you a poster. All right, folks, uh, speaking of history, later on in the show, we're going to meet Houston's orphaned heirloom lady. She finds old treasures at local estate sales and tries to return them to the families they belong to. But first, looking for that picture-perfect body for summer? As we just learned, summer snapshots can live on forever. So whether you want to lose 5 pounds or 10 pounds, we'll show you how you can slim down without surgery coming up next.